This is Vashla working as an associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this session, I would like to introduce uh, introduction about the design and analysis of algorithms codes and also about algorithms and why we need to study about this algorithm analysis as well as design that I introduce in this course as a part of the lecture series on design and analysis of for algorithm course. So this course includes, this session includes introduction to design and analysis algorithm course. What is an algorithm and why we study we would like to study about algorithms as a part of the computer science program, pseudocode for expressing algorithms, and performance analysis, space and time complexity, need of this performance analysis. So here we are to discuss about the importance of the design and analysis of the course and why it is needed for specifically computer science students actually. These algorithms are fundamental or to the computer science. They are very much useful. Algorithms are fun and using algorithms, we can explore our thought processing effectively. Related to specifically computer science, operating system, consists of various kinds of algorithms, scheduling algorithms and the job sequencing algorithms, any processor scheduling algorithms and various algorithms are in operating systems. In machine learning, supervised and unsupervised algorithms and various algorithms to make our machine possess a certain intelligence and related to cryptography, Cryptography is full of mathematics and the algorithms, which includes algorithms to make our information more secured, how, how this security can be implemented in sensitive data, specifically in banks and financial organizations and defense organization, etc. Networking, in networking environment, routing algorithms and various protocols, so how the protocols are going to be implemented in any networking environment will be in considered using some algorithm specifications only, as well as compiler design, which is most required area of computer science students. We have been using compilers, but computer science students are supposed to develop new compilers for various new languages. Further, they need various algorithms to be implemented, how to convert your machine level language into uh, a high level language into machine level language, how to recognize uh, keyword, data types, uh, etc., lexical analysis, uh, entire processes based upon algorithmic specifications only. And computational biology, what not any area of uh, computational related area is full of consists of algorithms only. So we need to study what are the various algorithm paradigms are available to us and how to use these algorithm methodologies and various techniques available to our applications so that our application can be considered as more efficient application. And also measurements of efficiency also will be discussed as a part of this course actually. Algorithms are useful all places, wherever these areas are available, we go more algorithms are going to be considered in various areas of computer science, not only related to computer science, these algorithms are useful to various branches of engineering also. These algorithms design is both an art as well as a science and we may get su surprised why because here it is a science we have been studying this as a part of our curriculum 
and mathematical notations are used mathematical logics are used but the efficient algorithm is going to be designed by people who are having some artistic sense also actually it is a field lots of exciting research questions are available lots of unsolved problems are still available and always we when we solve a problem whether that part solution is not a major criteria but the methodology used for solving this this problem is efficient or not or in better way can we solve this problem that always is a question behind our minds actually so first time getting solution we will concentrate upon only getting solution only but over a period of time not only solution and the methodology used to get that solution are how the solution is going to be effectively considered will also consider as one of the major factors of algorithm processing actually so that's why the main goals of this course are we have to build an algorithmic toolkit as well as we have to learn to think algorithmically and where it is applicable toolkit and new algorithms are going to be developed by us these are all will be considered as a part of this course whenever an algorithm designer is there always the designer will have in their minds designers will have in their minds as how can i do better way so this question must be there in all of us minds actually why because without that what happens no improvement will be there actually so that's why can i do better or not always this is going to be considered by these algorithm designers so what exactly do we mean by better and what about that corner case shouldn't we be at zero indexing that is here detail oriented precise rigorous way of questioning can be done by us actually so can i do in a better way or not we have to check what is meant by better actually if you can get a solution more effectively than previous one then now we can consider current one is a better one what is efficiency efficiency on which parameters this efficiency is going to be measured actually so that means uh, this is just like that other time if you do the things and the we if you did it as a part of our course and it will totally work really fast efficiency means that means whatever the solution we are getting if the solution is going to be achieved very fastly most of the time we will consider fastness is the criteria that is the time taken to execute or the time taken to solve a problem is less comparatively the methodology which we adopted earlier then the current methodology is better than that so this question always will be behind us throughout this course every time we would like to consider a new designing technique which is better than the designing techniques which already we studied actually so that means we will feel this tension throughout the course and always we would try to learn the better better techniques so that our applications can be designed more effectively actually we will consider a small example here so the small example is a, a simple integer multiplication we will do as usual so we have to first multiply by 4 and s multiply by 3 and we have to add the numbers for example integer multiplication numbers of having so many digits for example we are having the digits of 10 plus 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 17 10 by numbers digits by 17 digits then how much time it will take each with each number i have to first multiply that is 17 or 18 digits are there 18 times i am supposed to multiply and i have to 18 columns of data will be there so 18 times we have to further add also so if n is keeping on increasing actually for example a problem that you know how to solve we know that integer multiplication we know that how to solve it but if number of digits are keeping on increasing what happens the time taken to solve such problems are very very uh, uh, in, uh, increasing manner actually now you consider the number of digits how many digits are there 
I have to multiply how much time it will take actually. That is about n square one digit operations are required. That is at most n square multiplications are required and uh, at most two n square additions are required, right? So, and then I have to add n different to n digits also. And I may take one second to multiply two one digit numbers, then 0.6 seconds to add and so on and so forth. Then, then we can compute how much time it will take. That means how do you solve this type of problems? How long would you, it will take time to solve such problems actually? That means it depending upon the number of digits, depending upon the input, the data, uh, the time taken to solve such problems are keeping on uh, increasing actually. Increasing means not in terms of normal increasing actually. So it is uh, in a quadratic form of uh, increasing is there actually. As n increasing, n square is in increasing. That means uh, we have to now search for another methodology of multiplying two numbers. Can we do it uh, in a better manner? That means always whenever we are doing an, any uh, solution we are finding for an application, that solution is not sufficient. Of course, for the given set of data, it may be a better one. But if number of data items are going on increasing and the solution takes more time for uh, a proper uh, getting the proper solution actually. So that's why we have to think how these type of questions can be solved. What are the various methodologies can be adoptable by us so that the time taken to solve such problems irrespective of n can be cannot be increased drastically. So that's why then what we supposed to if we have various techniques with us if we have various methodologies with us to solve such type of uh, so, uh, problems then we have to select one of the methodologies. That means we have to dig into, into our algorithmic toolkit. That means if you know various tools are available, various techniques are available to us, then we can choose one of the technique which is giving going to give better solution to the current problem as a simple integer multiplication also. Then what we should know, so we are supposed to learn what is this toolkit actually. That means what are the various techniques are there, standard techniques are available. What are the various methodologies or paradigms are available to us to solve a problem actually. To write an algorithm so that the problem can be solved effectively. So that we have to learn all these uh, toolkit of uh, algorithmic toolkit should be learned by us so that we can apply to our any real time application. This course consists of uh, all such type of food paradigms are techniques available, standard techniques available and each technique, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages of such type of techniques, where it can be applicable and what is the time complexity, space complexity can be improvised by using those techniques will be discussed as a part of this course. So that what happens, all other courses which we discussed earlier like it may be a, uh, a cyber security or a, it may be a, uh, related to operating system algorithms. It may be related to machine learning or big data analytics or mining techniques. Whichever the techniques or whichever the area would like to consider, there we can apply various uh, techniques which we learn so that the effective application can be considered by us actually. So that's why we are going to study about all this entire toolkit for algorithmic toolkit is going to be uh, considered or studied elaboratively with various examples and applications during this course of study. So how an algorithm is considered as an a cru plays a crucial role in problem solving actually. For example, a problem is given to us. I have to solve a problem. Solving a problem, I am uh, discussing with reference to computer science. That is, solving a problem means I have to write a program, I have to test, then I have to get, uh, check uh, whatever the output I am getting is uh, verification of the output. All these things are there actually. Of course, same process is applicable to any other area also. 
but we have been discussing as a part of our computer science we will discuss what is the role of this algorithm in problem solving actually first any problem is given to us we have to analyze that particular problem as usual we have to analyze the problem and we have to see whether it can be solvable or not first question then the solution is that it means the solution is feasible solution exist or not if any feasible solution exists then we have to consider the most effective solution that is termed as a optimal solution so that means uh, during the process of getting this uh, efficient solution various steps we are going to do so those various steps are understanding the problem first that means we have to solve the problem means first i suppose to understand we suppose to understand the problem and we have to analyze the problem so what a analyzation means for example a simple problem we are taking so let us assume that 10 pens have been purchased uh, each pen cost is 10 rupees and each pen was sold for rupees 12 two of those 10 pens got uh, 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 i mean damaged so what is the profit whether we are going to profit or loss if it is how much percentage such a simple numerical problems also we have to first understand the problem we have to analyze so i need to get whether you percentage of profit or loss how can i get first i supposed to first learn whether profit uh, 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 for that particular problem whether we will get either profit or loss first that means i supposed to learn how to calculate profit loss for calculation of profit and loss i need total cost price total selling price so what is total cost price 10 pens purchased each pen 10 rupees means 100 rupees and uh, total selling price means so cost price is 100 rupees and uh, selling price is 8 uh, total pens are 10 but two of them are damaged so that's why 8 are there 8 into each pen is each pen was sold by for 12 rupees so 96 rupees as a selling price 12 into 8 so profit or loss i'll get i'll get loss of 2 rupees so based upon that percentage will be calculated that means i have to analyze what is given actually what i supposed to get output to get this output what are the requirements needs are there whether those needs are available to me or not first i have to analyze so that's that is the understanding analyzing the problem after that we have to decide on computational means that is exact versus approximate solutions and what type of data structures are used and which algorithmic design technique is applicable so that means as i just now told you we have to decide computational means how to compute it and whether i can get exact solution or approximate solution in the previous example i'll get exact solution all numeric values are available properly and we can get our exact solution to solve such problems what data structures are needed that means to, for example if i am doing programming for that what type of data structures are needed how the data can be stored that must be considered by us as well as computational means rules that is formulas must be available to us how to calculate cost profit or loss and how the percentage will be calculated to apply all these things we need some systematic procedure and that systematic procedure is algorithmic design techniques just now we discussed the toolkit is there no from that particular toolkit which tool is suitable to my current application that has to be chosen by me so this is going to be done through this various algorithmic design techniques are available to us so that's why what we supposed to do first so as a part of this i have to design a an algorithm for solving such problem after selecting data structures after selecting a methodology etc i have to design an algorithm and after designing algorithm i have to prove the correctness so whether that particular algorithm is providing a correct solution or not that must be proved by us correctness right any at any time if the incorrect again we have to come back to the our again computational means and we have to correct it modify the data structures again the new design algorithm and correctness so this is a 
a cyclic process as long as the algorithm is going to be proved as a correct. If the algorithm is correct, then we can go to the next step. What is next step? After correctness, analyze the algorithm. Okay, we are getting solution. Okay, very good. But what happens if the solution is uh, get we are uh, the solution which we are getting is uh, a better solution or not? Better way we are getting it or not? If it is better way, it's okay. Or it can be improvised. Then again we have to go back to our from the design step, and uh, again we have to modify it. A new design has to be applicable here. Then we have to prove the correctness. Then we have to analyze. So just now I, we explained uh, a simple integer multiplication. No? So in that particular simple integer multiplication, if for small values it's okay, but larger values it is uh, taking more and more and more and time. So I need to find out a new technique actually. Or I, I need to find out a new methodology or an algorithm to solve such problem. Like that at any time analyzation is going to be done. And according to the analyzation, if it is uh, proved as a, a good one, then we can move to the next step. That is, uh, this algorithm is uh, converted into program. That is, code algorithm means it will be converted into program. Then the program testing process is going to be done as usual as in any programming language. So, what we ne need to learn now? First, we need to learn what is an algorithm. Then, what are the various designing techniques are available? Or first, how to write an algorithm? How to design an algorithm? And what are the standard design techniques are available? How these standard design techniques are applicable to various applications? These things must be studied by us effectively so that what happens, any application can be easily implementable. Basically, this algorithm was introduced by a Persian mathematician and in a, uh, his ideas came to Europe in 12th century and he has used to a word algorithm. So, algorithm is a French word referred to just as an Arabic number system, but eventually it, it, it may it came to mean as an algorithm as now we are using for a particular purpose. So, the algorithm comes from the name of the Persian mathematician Abul J. for Muhammad and in computer science, this word refers to a special method usable or used by computer for a solution of a problem. And the statement of the problem specifies in general terms the desired input and output and the relationship between them actually. So, for example, I will take small example sorting. Input is a, a set of numbers are given to us or number integers are given to us or integers or whatever it may be depending upon the data which we would like to sort. Set of integers are given to us and we have to arrange them either in the increasing or decreasing order as needed and by using some logical sequence of operations actually. So, this logical sequence of operations are going to be having considered as a algorithms and how the sorting can be done. Various type of standard designing techniques are available. Analysis tools are available. Which technique is a better one? which technique is used by us. These are all this uh, will be discussed effectively and elaboratively during this course. Now we go to the our basic concept as an algorithm definition. So what is an algorithm definition? The formal definition of algorithm is a finite set of instructions that is followed or uh, accomplishes a particular task that is to solve any particular task, a set of finite instructions is termed as a algorithm. All algorithms should satisfy the following five characteristics. So basically what is an algorithm? It is a step-by-step -step procedure or finite set of statements or finite set of instructions used to solve a problem, a particular problem. So, the set of instructions are going to be written and these set of instructions or algorithm should satisfy these following five conditions. The first condition is the input. An algorithm can have zero or more inputs. Without inputs also an algorithm can be there. 
what is an algorithm to solve a problem as we discussed i give an example without any inputs for example a gui based output is going to be displayed so i am getting an output as uh, uh, um, uh, the na name of the college and uh, 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 my, my name uh, as well as the uh, name of the college my employee id details output only i am getting i did not provide anything to the input because th those are all included in, in display statements itself let us assume that that means input is not provided but i am getting at least output so any algorithm can have zero or more it may have or it may not have input actually so that's why it may have inputs more than zero or without inputs also sometimes some algorithms supposed to be written by us according to the need of the application the second one is output but always remember if you are solving a problem means we supposed to check whether the solution is correct or not at least for that purpose we need at least one output if there is no output we cannot verify how that was solved and what is the importance of that particular process actually so that's why output is must mandate so at least one output one quantity of the output must be there that is one must be produced minimum minimum one output must be produced by an algorithm input may not be there but output should be there then only our algorithm processor efficiency can be or at least whether it is working properly or not correctness can be at least uh, can be analyzed by us actually so that's why each algorithm should have either zero or more inputs and output must be at least one output must be there actually finiteness definiteness third characteristics Def definiteness means each instruction should be clear and unambiguous each instruction should be clear and unambiguous there should not be any puzzleness while writing our algorithm statements sometimes we used to write a statement very complex statements to uh, by thinking that such type of complexity may reflect our intelligence no as well as always we have to write anything in a simple form only which can be understandable by anybody so that's why here also while writing algorithm each instruction must be very very clear and unambiguous there should not be any uh, confusion while reading or while assessing or while tracing these instructions such the next characteristic is finiteness so what is meant by finiteness we trace out these instructions generally so while tracing these instructions tracing means for a program testing process will be there correctness of an algorithm is going to be assessed through tracing process so tracing means here when we are giving some input data to the variables how each instruction works after each instruction what are the contents of the variables will be analyzed by us so there is tracing of instructions of an algorithm then for all cases the algorithm terminates after a finite number of times there should not be any infinite loops for example i have written some statement like this i have written while i less than or equal to n i have written n is equal to n plus i and i closed initially i is equal to 1 n is equal to 5 so what happens this stub small stub here initially what is n value 5 i value 1 i less than or equal to n is s it i is less than or equal to n then what happens your n value n value or i may be writing m is equal to n plus i let us assume that so m is equal to n plus i means n value is 5 i value is 1 so 6 fine then what happens it will go again beginning of the loop again checks what is i value still 1 n value 5 and it will be repeated how many number of times infinite number of times why because we are not modifying either i value or n value to get satisfies this instruction for a period of time 
this is infinite actually so num physically number of steps are finite but what happened here so logically the statement while loop is keeping on executing infinitely why because the index variable the condition is not getting uh, a result as a false result over a period of time that is our responsibility as a programmer eventually your while loop should get terminated over a period of time that is infinite not only like that i have given a small example not only that while writing if conditions or while writing any control structures we have to trace out in such a way that all cases the algorithm should be terminating over a period of steps over a period of time so that is finiteness it must be finite not number of steps are finite physical finiteness is there as well as logical finiteness is there logically also it has to be completed or within a period of time actually effectiveness effectiveness means we will write some instructions in our program those instructions are not going to be reachable at any time then what is the use of such type of instructions that means each and every instruction must be very basic so that it can be carried out in principle by person using only pencil and paper ah uh, you your instructions must be get executed at least one set of values every instruction must be executed get executed or get traced for at least one set of values so if any instruction is such that it doesn't reachable <clears throat> while tracing then automatically we can say that instruction is not that much effective also so while designing an algorithm an algorithm should satisfy all these properties it should have zero or more inputs it should have at least one output each instruction must be definite each instruction uh, should have a uh, number of instructions must be logically as well as physically finiteness must be there and each instruction should have some effectiveness that is each in instruction should contribute to, to in the processing of, of uh, results actually so these algorithms are going to be considered as an important place an important role in various branches of computer science of course various branches of uh, any uh, uh, area of studies specifically in computer science each and every branch area of computer science consists of various algorithms and various methodologies and various techniques must be studied by us actually so that's why first we supposed to learn what is an algorithm how to write an algorithm what is the purpose of algorithm how to measure its efficiency so that improvisation can be applicable or not all these things we have to study elaborate so that it, you can apply in various areas actually so if we would like to learn about the algorithm what are the major areas we have to consider so that we can uh, 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 we we can write to most effective algorithms for any application so areas of study of algorithm is first one we have to how to devise an algorithm so how to devise an algorithm means how to design an algorithm that we supposed to learn so various existing designing techniques are available standard designing techniques are available proposed by various researchers so those techniques uh, those are going to be techniques are going to be providing us optimal solution or normal solution sometimes and normal solution to such problems which cannot be considered as a solvable for that also we can consider various types of uh, algorithmic designing techniques are available so that means we have to first concentrate upon the designing an, an algorithm that means it includes study of various designing techniques and it helps us to write any algorithm for any application by using existing designing techniques or by creating our own designing techniques also why because once you have an idea about all methodologies or all designing techniques what we can do if all these methodologies are not sufficient each of them is not sufficient we will 
try to mer merge them actually. We will try to merge them or we will try to combine them certain <coughs> characteristics so that our application can be get solved by using a, a new technique also or a new thought processing can be considered by us and a new technique can be devised by us also sometimes. <coughs> so first we have to learn existing designing. That is one area we have to concentrate. So by using this, we can write the algorithm. Fine. But what is that? Whether that particular algorithm is correct or not, we have to validate. So whichever the algorithm was written by us, we have to validate that algorithm. After the algorithm is written, it is necessary to check the correctness of the algorithm. That is the second area. That is with each input, correct input, what is the output we are getting and how this output is going to be considered or analyzed as an output which we are expecting actually. So that's why the second phase of algorithm writing is a, that means we are going to write second phase is writing program. So while writing a program, before writing a program, first we have to validate this algorithm. For example, in case of program, when we are writing program, what happens? Program can be verified by giving the test data actually. But algorithm, we have to give this data as well as we have to trace and we have to verify that correctness of the results produced by the respective algorithm. So first, how to analyze the algorithm, third step. That means fine, we designed an algorithm. Of course, we tested. That means we validated that algorithm. Its correctness was proved. Fine. But what is the starting point of our discussion? How can I do better? So that's why, how to analyze this algorithm? So if I want to get a better solution, first I have to find out what is the current algorithm, the solution produced by current algorithm characteristics. That is, we have to consider the performance analysis of the algorithms. That is, we are getting solution, fine. But the getting solution in an effective manner or not, efficient manner or not, that is, the performance analysis must be considered by us so that what happens, improvisation takes care. So what happens, the better algorithm can be designed by us actually. So that's why whenever we are designing an algorithm, designed an algorithm and proved correctness also, verified for correctness also, then we will try to improvise that algorithm so that the solution which we got can be improvised. So, how can you consider the current solution is no, uh, I mean, the uh, expected solution or an expected designing or a modification of the existing algorithm is a better one based upon certain parameters. Performance analysis can be done based upon certain parameters. So, the basic parameters of performance analysis of an algorithm can be done on time as well as space complexities. That is how much time the algorithm will take to get the solution for a given set of data items and what how much memory space it occupies uh, during the process of the getting the solution. So that means the time complexity, we will call it as a time taken by the respective algorithm, space complexity as the memory space needed or occupied by the respective algorithm while finding these solutions. So these things are going to be considered as a major areas of the algorithms to be studied by us actually. So first designing techniques, next how to validate, next to how to analyze. And we'll start first discussion how to write an algorithm first in general. Then we will try to uh, discuss various measures used to, to analyze our algorithm. And then we will go back to our techniques to justify which technique is better suitable and what are the pros and cons of each technique. But remember, if you are writing a program, what happens? We can test the program. Test the program is, first we will write null program. Program means set of instructions written in a programming. High level language is a program now. In general, this program can have two phases or two pauses it will go. First, Compilation, second one is execution. 
So compilation means debugging is the detection and correction of errors during the compilation process. And the profiling or performance measurement is the actual amount of time required by the program to compute the result. So all of us are very easily understand how much time a program will be taken, uh, time will be taken by a program. Easily can be uh, measurable actually. From system input itself, we can get how much time it takes, how much memory it occupies, how much time it takes. In most of the systems, easily we can get this output. So that's why no problem for program. But what about algorithm? Algorithm is not at all implemented in a system. So how much time it will take? How much space it is occupying? That is also one area of study which we have to consider to specify the, the effectiveness of algorithm actually. So these are the things we are going to study in further sessions effectively so that we can write the most effective algorithms for any given applications and we can analyze how this algorithm is more efficient. While writing algorithm, we will use various notations that can be followed by us actually. These are the notations generally followed. We will call it as a pseudocode also. So pseudocode means some uh, each instruction will have some specific uh, uh, syntax like that we are using it. Of course, it is not related to a program. So we need not worry about the statements used in any programming language. But we will use uh, some similar to some of these uh, programming, common programming languages we is used. So comments generally we will write as a double slashes we can write and we can use simple statement as usual. Assignment statements are going to be used by using a, uh, a colon, variable colon. These are all notations. You may be using different notation and I may be using different notations, but we are going to study about the notations to be followed further so that what happens during the course of study, uh, the, these notations are meant for this purpose. At least we can understand that. So logical operators uh, uh, and are not relational less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, not equal to. And Boolean variables, we will use true, false as a capitals. Compound statement, we will use while loop, repeat until or for loop. All are having the same meaning. For loop also variable, value 1 to value 2, step step value. That is initialization, incrementation and it can be final value checking. While loop, as long as the condition is true, while do we will consider and repeat until. I'm not going to discuss much about uh, these uh, control structures because the prerequisite for this course is you must know in any language. So that's why according to the language, all of us might have studied some control structures, all control, maybe different, different formats, but the logical meaning will be the same actually. So we can use conditional statement. We can use uh, loop structures, repeat until or while do or do you can use uh, for loop and case statements can also be used as a multi branching simple if statement or if else statement or nested if statement case statements or are valid all are allowed but we will write instead of using or following a programming language format we will follow a normal format specification just like a code specification only input outputs are generally we won't use any input output statements while writing algorithm because each algorithm will be written as a function, written as a user defined function. So inputs are going to be passed as parameters, outputs are also going to be passed as parameters through written statement or any output parameters. So that's why most of the time in algorithms, uh, I mean, specifically in uh, uh, designing paradigms, which we are going to discuss further, in most of the cases, we won't consider these read it and write statements, that is inputting and output statements are not considered. Most of the data is passed through parameters because each methodology will be considered as a uh, user defined function. So generally we will write algorithm, uh, header will be like this, algorithm name followed by parameter list. The, through these parameters, the input is going to be passed actually. 
For example, we have written an example algorithm maximum of n numbers. So maximum of n numbers I have given you observe. This algorithm is the standard word. Max is the algorithm name. What are the parameters I am passing? I am passing two parameters A and N. A is an array. N is the size of the array. So array is, that means A of N elements are passed. A1, A2, etc. An were passed. So I would like to find maximum means. First I am storing result. The first element. First element gets a the maximum I stored. And from second element onwards I am checking. Already stored value is lesser than the existing value. The stored value is modified. Otherwise, it won't be modified. A simple algorithm was written by us. So, we are assigning to the first element. So, second element onwards, I am checking. Because what is this result? This result consists of always maximum value up to ith number. Up to ith value, what is the maximum? So initially, first value. When I am reading the constraint, the second one, I am checking with a of i. a of i means a of 2. If a of 2 is greater than result, then I am modifying the result as a of 2. Similarly, a of 3, I am modifying. If it is not greater than, the previous value remains as it is. So this is a for loop was considered here. So after completion of this loop, I will get the result is going to be consists of the the respective value and the return result is the last statement of the algorithm. So that it results, result what result consists of maximum value that will be returned by the respective algorithm. Return means output, it is sent back where it is called action. So now you observe here, there is no any <coughs> input statement we are passing as parameters, output is also sending as a Written through written statement output is sending from where this algorithm was invoked actually. So this is an exercise. We will check some of the solutions of these uh, algorithms in coming classes, uh, some in coming sessions. Uh, so that what happens, uh, uh, we will analyze, we are able to analyze uh, how these algorithms are, how much time it will take, uh, how much uh, space it is occupying can be discussed by us. So what are the things of algorithms, whether a given number is prime or not, first print the numbers of Fibonacci series, some of the given two matrices, product of the matrices, as well as some of the first n natural numbers, even numbers and odd numbers. So we see solutions for these problems so that this can be used by us after it of time. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.